Welcome to Get Sports Focus. It is week two, and I got Alejandro Flores standing by. I got Coach Andrew coming up later on, and uh, we have some reactions from last week's games, uh, some predictions for this upcoming week. Um, we also have a new segment that we're going to talk about at the end of, of, of this whole thing uh, with Coach Andrew. But to start things off, we're going to do um, we're going to have Alejandro. Uh, talk about his experience as a GSF shooter for the first time last week. He covered Milpitas and Oak Grove. We got the highlights for that coming up as well. So stay tuned. You're watching Get Sports Focus. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing. Weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches championship level sandwiches every single time south bay construction a reputation built on trust and by fuel good fueling your success conveniently located in santa clara off homestead road for more info go to fuelgoodmealprep.com this is alejandro flores people you've probably seen his face in some of the interviews but uh last week was his first week uh as a shooter as a journalist we call it vj video journalist i think that's still the term but um yeah man just it let's let's introduce yourself you, i will let you introduce yourself to the gsf universe and then we can go from there well again yeah my name is alejandro flores um it's my first time working for gsf it's funny too. It's like a full circle moment for me because I used to by GSF back in my high school playing days, and now coming back here to work for it is actually like a really cool moment for me. And you know, I graduated from Chapman University just this past year, and now working for GSF and getting to cover high school sports. It's a great opportunity, and a lot of great players that I've already had the opportunity to meet. A lot of great teams that I've had the chance to cover as well. Nice. Well, we we welcome you with open arms and. I, you've been doing such a really good job with with some of the interviews and the thing with college graduates when it comes to like broadcast from the years I've been doing this we, we've had a lot of interns uh our goal mm -hmm. is to always like get you the big job after you spend time here for a year or two or maybe less uh and so yeah. Alejandro has been a, a a a real professional when it comes to going about his his duties and and uh Chapman Great job. <laughs> Appreciate That's a great it. Thank program. You so much. No, it is. It's up and coming. It's been very underrated the past few years. And now I guess the advantage it has is being at a film school. So mm -hmm. when you know when you're at a film school, you have access to a lot of the high tech equipment that you can use to cover sports. And since it's D3, you have full clearance. You know, you're not taken over by any other big time networks to cover any games. It's it's all on you. So yeah, that's a really yeah. it's a really cool opportunity. Well, one of the things I like to do is I like to throw people into the fire right away, you know, just to kind of see like, All right. see the, the potential, right? And so that's what I did with him. Yeah. The first time he called me, I was like, okay, well, what are you doing Saturday? And he was like, I'm available. So, okay, why don't you come out to a seven on seven tournament? So the Foothill tournament was our, well, your first time. And he yeah. probably, you probably didn't think you were going to do anything. But I'm like, hey, oh, let's see funny. what you could do. <laughs> it was funny. It's funny when you told me that, too. You were telling me, like, midway through, I thought I was just shadowing and watching. He's like, hey, by the way, we're going to interview the Reardon coach, by the way. I was like, oh, 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 okay. And then I had to, like, start going to my phone. I started, like, looking stuff up, trying to get, like, notes down before. I didn't want to sound like a fool when I was going out there. But I like that you put me on the spot. Had me ready to go. Yeah, you you ex the moment. executed. Uh, and if you guys want to see him, that, that interview is, is online. But... It's definitely a, a fun job. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to go whichever way. There's there's the art side of it. There's the PR side of it. There's the business side of it. Um, and, yep. you know, you definitely have the talent. I know you want to do play by play. Uh, yeah, I think you'll find a lot of opportunities uh, judging by the, just the way you you go about doing things, I think you're going to do really really well, and we're lucky to have you for for now. Uh, we have, we're we're in week two. Well, I appreciate you. You've interviewed some yeah. big players, so 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 the guys that you've inter talked to so far, uh, 
what was that experience like? I mean, you probably didn't know much about these guys coming in, but then you find out like they're, they're future college players, maybe even a couple of pros. Yeah. There. yeah. The biggest thing was, you know, being down at school in SoCal, I got disconnected a little bit from the high school game here and, you know, some of the players, the big names, what was really going on here. So having a chance to do those interviews gave me an opportunity to kind of reconnect myself to the high school scene here uh, in the Bay Area. And it was a chance to meet a lot of great people, a lot of great players. You know, Kingston is one, the cowboy kicker, you know, like a few names just to name off right there. Chase Cahoon, a lot of players who are coming off of their own stories. You know, you have Chase who's coming off of an injury. You have Kingston who's, you know, from a family of five brothers, you know, and, and Kingston having to grind through and all that stuff. They all have their different stories. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, what we get to do is, you know, we get to be storytellers. We get to tell their stories to the world and, you know, give them a chance to show the spotlight, right, to a lot of these players who work so hard to achieve their goals. And, you know, then we get to see the inside layers of what really goes on behind the scenes. They're grinding, their education, you know, how much they value that, their family, everything like that's so important to who they are on the field. And that was a great opportunity I had, you know, doing those interviews, just getting to sit down. It was a great setting, too. It was just really like a one on one chat with all these players and just getting to know them better. And it's just I always told them before the interview, I was like, hey, like there's nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be worried about. I'm literally sitting down. We're having a conversation. Imagine it like I'm meeting you for the first time and I'm just catching up with you. And, and those are, that's what I really loved about doing those interviews. Well, we talked to a couple of those guys. Uh, there's a couple of guys that we talked to. Uh, Reese McKeever from Bellarmine College. Yes. Uh, he had a, a, a really bad injury uh, this past Saturday. And remember when we mm -hmm. talked to him, you talked to him. Uh, I mean, yeah. they, they're out to shock the world. And dude, he he was. They were. He was doing so yeah. well. He had like three tackles. He had a couple of TFLs. And, and, and mm -hmm. uh, he had a couple of catches, I think at least one catch and and they were advancing the ball. He was having a really, really good game up to that point, yeah. the injury. So uh, Reese, we're thinking about you, man. Hopefully you, you get back on track, you know, as soon as yeah. possible. Um, it was just an unfortunate injury. And It is. And the, the biggest thing is just from beating Reese and knowing Reese. So it's, if there's anyone who could come back from an injury like that, it's, it's Reese, you know, the way he talks about how much he put into time, not just physically, but mentally as well. And, you know, and you know, he's still going to do that. He's, he's a guy who's like a vocal leader for this team. He's always out there. He, and you could tell, you know, in the early first quarter, the way you always described it, he was the energy. Got it. So I know that's still not going to waver for Reese. He's going to still be a part of the team. He's going to try to learn mentally. And if there's going to be someone who grinds back from an injury like that, it will be Reese. So yeah. I'm wishing for all the best for Reese. And I, I expect a great comeback. And uh, we we also talked to Teddy Chung of the Sarah Padres. Uh, he was okay. The way that game, did you see the highlights? Yes, so I saw the highlights. Up, yeah, the way it ended up happening was Teddy made one of the biggest plays at, in in program history. They were they were down what three. Two. They, they were, were down two. Yeah, they were down. They were down two. Yeah, one or two. The way the field goal was they, the one that they recovered the onside kick, and it was. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a kicker who who's who's a junior and and he's inexperienced, but man, <laughs> they executed that to the to perfection. Oh, Eddie grabbed it, got the ball back. They scored right, and then yep. at the very end. Ryder Lions, five-star QB from Folsom. He threw a touchdown that Teddy broke up. Yeah, and that was on the money, too. I have to say, for for last Hail Mary throw, that was right there, and that was a great breakup by Teddy. But I also got to give credit. That was one of the best onside kick designs I've seen. I really like the style that they went with there. Instead of, you know, lining up, and then it just kind of leads it to a toss to the right or the left side, huddled up, immediately turned around, and just – fired the kick off like the team didn't even have a second to react it was just bobbling in their hands and then teddy of course making the big play right there but testament to the sarah team 
Yeah, they've yeah. been here before. They've won the big games. Yeah, and they did so again. The Dallas South Spartans next, which was orig originally your game, but I've taken over that game because you are going to be with me on Thursday for the GSF game. We get to see the Cowboy Kicker and the Milpitas, yep. who you just covered. Uh, that should be exciting. But let, let's go back Friday. You shot Oak Grove, Milpitas. I mm -hmm. know we have a lot of friends at Oak Grove, and we actually haven't seen Milpitas for, for, for a short while now. But uh, tell me about that game, and I'll, I'll have you introduce the highlights when you're, when you're done talking about it. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it was a, you know, game going in on sunset. It was like a perfect setting. And it was actually a filled out crowd. I got to say Oak Grove had a lot of people out in that crowd. It was a big hyped up game. But what I saw was Peter's team that, especially offensively, they were stacked from top to bottom. There weren't too many flaws that I saw in that game with, you know, their running back, their quarterback, like everything that built that offense together it flowed very well and it turned out to be a fantastic game for Mopitas. It was a eye opener. Sure. This brought them onto the map and now they got a big game against Santa Teresa where they really have a chance to fully make a statement like, yeah, we're here. Well, well let, let's, are you ready to see the highlights? Oh yeah, man. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right. Great game. I can't wait to see the highlights. Let's do it. Friday Night Lights in San Jose as the Oak Grove Eagles laid host to the Milpitas Trojans. Starting off with Milpitas' first drive of the first quarter, senior quarterback Adrian Chavez gets it out to his fellow senior classman Roman Johnson, who puts a couple moves on and does the rest himself as he'll take it to the house for an early 7-0 lead for the Trojans. Now later in the first quarter, Chavez on a third and extremely long, draws back in the pocket and gets it to his receiver Patrick Lucero who takes a boom stick of a hit but holds on tight. A couple plays later, the Trojans hand it off to Reynaldo Dunbar and like a runaway freight train bullies his way into the end zone. And Milpitas caps off another long touchdown drive to take an early two possession lead in the first quarter. Moving on to quarter two and Dunbar, he isn't satisfied just yet. Dunbar breaks through into the second level and in a foot race, Dunbar is gone. Breaking loose down the sidelines, and just like that, the Trojans jump out to a 19-0 lead with their offense in a flow state in the first half. Down 19-0 entering the second half, the Eagles looking for anything positive, and they won't find it. This time they kick off to Roman Johnson getting a little bit of return action. He breaks loose down the sidelines, and he would have been gone had he not fumbled the football. Off of the great Johnson return, Chavez in great field position says, thank you very much. He'll power it into the end zone. Chavez his second touchdown of the day, one rushing, one passing. Now late into the third quarter, Chavez, he gets it to Patrick Lucero. Lucero runs it in for his first touchdown of the day. And the Trojans, an offensive onslaught in the Eagles home. Great job on the highlights. I'm, I'm going to give you some pointers on how to improve that. But for the most part, you, you executed. You got the job done. Uh, Thursday, tomorrow. Man, it's already Wednesday. Tomorrow, GSF Game of the Week, Week 2. Uh, we got the Santa Teresa Saints. Are they going to Milpitas? Or are they, is Milpitas They're going? They're going to Milpitas. Okay. They're going to Milpitas. Nice. So Milpitas okay. is laying host to Santa Teresa. And, you know, this is a Santa Teresa team that just – Obviously, they put a route on themselves as well, putting up 40 points. But, you know, they're going against Santa Teresa team that's experienced. You know, they've won before with Coach Pappin. You know, he knows what he's doing. But Milpitas is a team that's, you know, they were good last year. They were 6-4 and four last year. You know, they won a couple big games. But now this is a time that they feel like they have a big senior class. So that obviously means they have a lot of juniors who are coming up. Now have the opportunity to really make a name for themselves. Are you talking about Milpitas or Santa Teresa? Milpitas. Milpitas. Okay. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah. Uh, number number one and number two, the, 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 those two were, uh, I mean, they were all over the place. Uh, did it really look as bad as it did on the highlights or did Oak Grove look good at all, like in some? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be as brutally honest as possible. The highlights made it look a little bit better than it actually was too. There was a, because, you know, we took out a lot of plays that still also have it from OPS. There was a lot of 
big chunk plays and you know we we trimmed it down a little bit but Milpitas definitely was dominant from the you know they got a first stop against Oak Grove and then immediately obviously that first drop that they had they score a touchdown get another stop touchdown and just since then it just continued to spiral out of control and a big thing about that game too is uh Starting for both sides, is a lot of players did go down, and it was it seemed to be just minor issues like cramps and stuff like that. But you know, obviously in the first game, that's bound to happen. You know, there's players who didn't hydrate properly, or it's their first game back, so they really got to get that game speed going again. So that's what um, week two is all about, too. So Milpitas put on a great week one performance, but now there's also things that I imagine their coaches want to improve on, and things they feel like they can tune up for a much tougher Santa Teresa opponent. Yeah, yeah. Well, Oak Grove's got Palo Alto next, so that's gonna that's gonna be a yep. tough one again for the for the again. Eagles, Coach Cordero and the Eagles. Uh, but this game of the week on Thursday is gonna be huge. We got the Cowboy Kicker on GSF. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make the prediction that this is gonna be a uh, field goal win, uh, for Santa Teresa. Uh, I'm gonna go with that as well that as well i was actually going to say it was it's probably going to be a close game i expect it to be within three points between both teams i expect even even though i have santa Teresa winning and i have santa Teresa winning because i have a big expectations for coach pappen this year and what this team can do to try to get back to winning ccs um i think this bill peters team is also no slouch and it wasn't a fluke and i think they're going to prove that in this game even if they lose this game if they just go out there and they still compete with a team like Santa Teresa, Mel is going to show, okay, you know, we're, we're not a team that can be looked over. And I think, I think that'll still be a big statement. And in the end, you know, if it comes down to the final minutes and, you know, in field goal range, I trust the Cowboy kicker to put it away. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, bro, my this, Cowboy hat for this. This is what we call the uh, make us proud, prove us wrong segment. The GSF prediction segment. It got Alejandro Flores here. Hey, thanks for uh, swinging by. I know you're a busy guy, so do your thing, and I'll see you tomorrow night. No, it's awesome. I can't wait to be there. And again, thank you for having me on. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing, weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches. Championship level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. And by Fuel Good, fueling your success. Conveniently located in Santa Clara off Homestead Road. For more info, go to fuelgoodmealprep.com. And now I have. <laughs> I am speed. Okay, nice, nice. All right. And it's a turtle. <laughs> turtle with 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 turbo boosters on the back. <laughs> <laughs> we got Coach Andrew. He is the man. He beat me six to five last week. That's just by one. I got lucky. I got lucky, um, but a couple of them, like you know, got me. I was like, okay, that that got me. Uh, you proved me wrong. Some people made me proud, oh, yeah. and you know what? I'm gonna take it on the chin. But I, I feel confident. I feel confident with this week. I think I picked. I think I picked well. I uh, I got two of the biggest games right. Uh, St. Francis, they could have had a running clock against Helix, but you know how St. Francis are. They don't they don't like to run up the score on their opponents. But but also, since we kind of know him pretty well, Kingston had two touchdowns. No, he had a he had a sure touchdown where he just tripped. <laughs> oh yeah. And honestly, I was like, like no. Oh. But by that time, it was already like 28-0 or something like that. And uh Aaron Knapp looks really good, by the way. Looks strong. Oh, he looks he looks really strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm I'm real excited. Um, I'm real excited for, for St. Francis. They look yeah, they just look really strong. I, I don't think 
you know, this, whatever we said at the beginning, I think that shakeup might, there's going to be a shakeup somewhere and it's looking like it's going there. So you ready to jump into it? I'm ready to, hold on. I got to, I got to text my guy, Kevin Cuenca. He's asking me about this week. Uh, Kevin shot the game of the year, Sarah Padres beating. Well, I, I told him, whatever you do, don't read anything. Just listen to me and coach Andrew, because I don't want you to get thrown off. I told him it's going to be close. You got to shoot a certain way in certain situations. And sure enough, he did. He got the perfect shot of that onside kick. He got a perfect shot of that, 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 that last pass. And um, yeah, Sarah Padres. Hey, there's a clip of coach Walsh when he said, never doubt the Padres. And you know what? I did. You doubters out there. <laughs> I did. You, you, oh, yeah, that's right. You did. I think I, hey, my, I was, I was proud of my prediction because I was pretty spot on except for the score. But I was still pretty I field goal. No, you yeah, like that was impressed. Honestly, I gotta give that to you. That was that's impressive. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Let's just jump into it. You know, let's I, just jump into it. Let's go. Okay. Let's start uh, with tomorrow, game of the week. Ooh. Well, I already picked uh Santa Teresa. Uh I was just talking to uh Alejandro Flores and um I'm picking Santa Teresa by a field goal. That was not my original pick, but I kind of threw a curveball at you just now. You just did, but you know what? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to agree. Like I'm gonna go with ST. Um, I'm I'm thinking they're gonna go by two touchdowns. I mean, they had a good physical game. They played physical against like Ogrove. You know, the um, I, I think that's just. I think this is Milpitas. Like they. have They've never really like fallen off. Like they're always like they kind of just like hover in the middle of the pack all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but when they're good, we we will we'll know we'll know they're good. Santa Teresa, they have. I mean, Coach Pat. I mean, respect. You know, legend. But you know what he's got? He's got. I remember I met these kids that are on this team now. I met them last year at the championship parade with the Panthers. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I can't remember his name because they came to a couple of our stuff. And one of them said, like, oh, you're Coach Andrew, you're the strength coach. Promise you, 2024, we're going to be good. I was like, okay. I was like, I'll keep an eye out. And from what it looks like, if you're going to put the beat down on a team like Fremont, like, you know, like, you know, kind of like those lower tier leagues that like, you know, this helps them more than it helps the A-League teams. Like, you have to put that kind of show on in that game. And they did. So I think Santa Teresa, with the experience that they've gathered through the last couple of years, this might be their game. I'm saying 28-14. 28-14. I got 28-24. Uh, Milpitas, they got some ballers there. I think they're going to be hyped for this game. It's their first home game. And, you know, they handled Oak Grove pretty well. Oak Grove's got... Palo Alto this week. So that's going to be a tough, another tough game for, for those guys. But with this game, it's game of the week, Thursday night. It's one of the few games out there. Uh, you know, for sure that these guys are going to be juiced, especially now that it's the game of the week. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Santa Teresa 28 to 24. Okay. Cowboy this kick. Let's go. This next one is like this one was. I had to think really hard about this next game. What do we got next? We got next. We got we got the we got the Mac boys visiting the Lancers. Mm. Like I said, like this was a hard one to kind of pick because I mean, against Reardon, it was like you know Reardon hold, held on, um, but I mean it's McClyman's. I mean, it's it's Mac. Like Mac's always going to be physical, and I think this is a good. This is a, not even good. This is a great test for St. Francis. Like this is a great test for them. I think it's going to be really close, um, like a one score game. Close, like actually no, I, yeah, one score game, but field goal. 
close, like 24-21. But I'm going to go with St. Francis and Kingston we trust. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I it like it. Close, I though. like it. Uh, McClyman, St. Francis, first time meeting each other, I believe. I saw St. Francis. And my initial feedback or, or, or review, whatever you want to call it, St. Francis, they're a complete team. They have special teams. Uh, they have offense. They have defense. I think their strength is their line. They are huge. They beat up on Helix mainly because of the line. Um, now McClyman's they they play fast and physical that that's a, that's just how they are. Um, I'm not sure about the reared and defense. Like they, they get, they give up a lot of points, uh, but they also score a lot of points. So I think this is going to be an opportunity for, um, the defense, the, the St. Francis defense to kind of shine and, and show, Follow through like what they did last last week. People started cramping up last week. Jackson Cahoon was cramping up the entire game. Still made twelve tackles. He had a forced fumble. Um, he had a couple of TFLs. Um, he he was the he was one of the finalists for the GSF Weekly uh, Defensive uh, Player of the Game. But we gave it to Trevor Dong because Trevor in the first half he had twelve tackles. Five solo tackles. So that kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Trevor actually went out the second half uh, because of cramping, but they didn't really need anything in the second half because that game was wrapped up at halftime. It was like 21-0. Um, St. Francis was just too much for Helix. And I think that's what's going to happen too with this one. But I do have McClyman scoring three uh, touchdowns and maybe a, a, like a... a, a a two point conversion. Uh 28 22 is my final prediction for this game. Uh Lancers. Um big McClimas is capable of the big plays. And I think St. Francis, the way they play, they're very consistent. They 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 control the game. And I think it's gonna be a battle in the line. But I'm taking St. Francis as well. 28 22. <laughs> This should have been game of the week, coach, but it's not because I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think, okay, this next game, I feel like it's just because, you know, it's, it's too obvious to become a game of the week. It's too obvious because everyone's already going to know that it's going to be a crazy game. And for the people out there, we are talking about the Sarah Padres versus the De La Salle Spartans. Mm. Coming That's off two, matchup. both of them coming off like good wins. Yeah, you know, like they, they, yeah. I mean, you can't really ask for a better matchup, especially this early in the season. You know, Sarah's got like this is the second, second test. I would say this is the second test for them in this really tough preseason. Um, but I gotta go with the De La Salle Spartans in this one because of one guy. Deuce Jones Drew, son of the legendary Maurice Jones Drew. Shout out Katie Prep. <laughs> yeah. So you're picking De La Salle. Oh. I'm picking De La Salle. I'm going De La Salle 28 21. 28 21. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> right. Uh, whatever. Look, everybody was looking at Sarah as if they're starting from the bottom. No. Did you know that the entire 2023 season, all those young players were going against guys that are now playing on Saturdays? So... I mean, they're not even backups. They're 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 just as good. If not, they're gonna be better than some of the guys from last year. And you know, you got Malachi, you got Nano, you got 
I mean, the quarterback, he, he was, he had a great game. I mean, it was his first game. Uh, so well, I guess what I'm saying is like these young starters, these 18 people, 18 players, they're, they're, they're better than they, than, than most varsity players out there. So I'm picking Sarah. Yeah. Uh, 27 to 21. Uh, but to be honest, this, this could be a run. I was about to say the R word. It's not. I. <laughs> it's not going to be, a, it's no, it's not going to be that. It won't. Trust me. It won't. It's going to be closer than you think. 28-0 last year. And do you know who scored those two touchdowns last year? The last two touchdowns? These guys that are playing this this Friday. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Both teams are reloaded. That's this is why this is Oh yeah, work. no, I'm I'm not I'm not being disrespectful to De La Salle. I I'm I'm just telling you what I think, honestly, I think this, this this could be like last year's game. But my predict my my score is 27-21. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a one score game, regardless. Yeah. It's good, it's going to be a one score game. And I think that's just what it that's just what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a one yeah. score game. And for, and I just wanna say these two teams are the two teams that for some reason, everybody wants to see lose. Like, they can't wait. Oh yeah, to lose. Be they can't wait for Sarah to lose. It's so weird. So now that they're <laughs> playing each other, well, yeah, there you go. I think oh, the majority yeah. of people pick De La Salle. I I'm going against the grain. I, I think it's gonna be similar to last year. So 27-21. Sarah. <sighs> All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, so we got. Bishop Montague and Pittsburgh. I don't know no, anything about no, Bishop no. Monogue. Monogue. Yeah, they. So Bishop Monogue. The reason why they're on our schedule is because we kind of know this team from the last two years that they participated in our seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. Which they one were they? The green and gold team from Nevada. And sorry, Pittsburgh. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Uh, it's not. It's not a disres It's not a disrespect thing. I just don't know who that is. So I don't know anything about you guys. Uh, do we know anybody on that team? Brandon Mann. Never mind. All right, that's enough of a name to know. <laughs> All right, so we know what he can do, but we also know what Pitt Pitt is capable of doing too. Well, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of outlets thinks Pittsburgh is the best team and one of the best teams, uh, definitely a top four team in the Bay Area. And so, since it's the Bay Area, I'm picking Pitt. Yeah. 5-32. Yeah, I'm picking Pitt, 31-27. So, like I said, I don't know I don't know a lot about Bishop Minogue. I only know about Brandon Mann. Brandon Mann can put a game on his shoulders. He could. He can do that. Um, but Pittsburgh is always good. And – it's Bay Area versus somebody that's not from the Bay Area, so I will always pick Bay Area. Yeah. If I don't know about you, I will always pick Bay Area. <laughs> this is a this is a, a really good opportunity for uh, Marley and uh, Brandon to just mm, show off. Let's go, yeah. Marley Alcantara. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Woodside yeah. Sequoia. Woodside Sequoia. Okay. I. Mm. This is like one of those like really good toss up games. They're pretty like, from what I've known, like what I've seen from both programs. Like if you put them like just tail of paper and like tail of the tape from like the last couple of years, they're pretty even, per se. You know, it just kind of see like it's just kind of like who executes um, a little bit more. What I know is that we did have a lot of Woodside kids that were ballers, um, all in the GSF All Star game last year. Yeah. Um, a little bit less on the Sequoia side. So that's my assumption is that, you know, there's probably more Sequoia kids coming back than there are Woodside. So just based on that alone, I give the edge to Sequoia 21-17. 21, I'm going with Woodside 24-14. Um, 
I'm going to be there. So y'all show out. We're scouting for GSF All-Stars. Um, but it should be a great game. It's on a Saturday. I think Ethan's going to be there too. So now we have more Friday night games that we have on, on, on the list. Reardon at St. Bonaventure. Last year, SB beat uh, Reardon in San Francisco. Big win for them. They had a lot of sophomores, coach. <laughs> St. Bonaventure? Yeah. So this All is gonna guys be that we're making plays are sophomores. So if they are back, if they didn't transfer out to a bigger school, then that's a different. But hey, this is a Bay Area versus SoCal. Bay I'm Area all day. In. But with how they played last week against Mac and like how close it was, like if I'm hoping that's not the trend. That's why like I picked it to be a close game, 28-24. Um, just because of what, what was like, you know, what was shown, you know, there was a lot of mistakes. So like, prove me wrong there that you guys can clean up the mistakes. Yeah. Like you guys can clean it up, um, and play the complete game that, you know, Reardon is capable of. If they do that, I think they, they have a pretty good chance because that Reardon team, if, if it is St. Bonaventure and it's the same kids that played last year, these are the same kids from Reardon that played them last year. Yeah. So they, they're pretty aware and like, pretty well like they know who, we, who each other is so i think that gives them more of an edge but i you know i'm gonna give it to the bay area you have to i ran into coach adir at the saturday game last this over the weekend and uh yeah i mean he's 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 got the boys under control man so uh my score is 35 to 14 reardon oh yeah you go next game salinas at valley christian Woo! This okay. is a good one. Okay, so we know Salinas runs the PCAL. You know, the, Salinas has won it pretty much like the last three years. Um, and they're always like, you know, they're always just a big team. I don't see them being there yet. They're young. They're a younger team still. They still got big guys. But Valley Christian, they have – the young guys that have been playing on varsity, so they got experience, and that is going to edge them out. I'm going Valley Christian 28 to 14. I'm going Valley Christian 21 to 7. Happy birthday, Marcel Leggett. That's all I got to <laughs> Liberty at Los Gatos. I got Liberty winning 42 to 35. I think. Uh, Bell's going to have a really good game against Los Gatos, even though Los Gatos' defense is really, really good. Um, I just think being at home... Oh, wait. Are they at Los Gatos? They're at Los Gatos. Well, that changes things. But I'm still going to go Liberty. I think Liberty is going to come down. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going to just be close. Like, you know, I think Los Gatos is going to rise to that occasion and they're going to try to keep it close the whole time. And then just edge it out. Whoever's got the last possession, 28-21. Let's see if LG can pull this out. I think they can too, but I don't know. I, I think a high-scoring game would be very, very entertaining between these two guys. Uh, is it Henry Masters, the defensive player for Los Gatos? I think th th it's going to be a good matchup. But Bell, remember that name, Bell, uh, number two for Liberty. Uh, he's he, he's he's bound to have one of the one one big game in this preseason schedule. Uh, Hollister at Wilcox. Okay, so <laughs> was totally off with the whole Wilcox thing last week, and you, Jackson you, Bell remembered. Hey, <laughs> hey, but I think with Wilcox, like I mean, right now, like you have, I mean. Ray Rosa, like he did, he played the game that he, we, I mean, everyone expected him to play, played well. Um, Hollister, you know, the, the way they, like they were down against Brandon. And then they just marched it back and took that away. So, and Hollister is back to like, kind of like, you know, their typical, you know, power offense, you know. So against a team that's still trying to figure out their identity and Wilcox is still a good team, like, a run, run heavy offense, like that's just gonna wear and tear on, you know, on a team. And I think that's what they did to Branham. They just like stayed patient and just ran them down. That's it. So I'm gonna go Hollister twenty one fourteen. Hmm. I'm going Wilcox. 
17 to 7. Eat that clock. Let's go, Wilcox. Um, obviously, we have one more game. The Battle of the Sacreds. Sacred Heart Prep at Sacred Heart Cathedral at Kizar, San Francisco. Um, I got the Gators on this, Coach. I know you do. I picked the Irish. <laughs> I like that quarterback from Sacred Heart. And I'm if my assumption is right, like this is this is the same young Sacred Heart crew that came in after that mass graduation that happened. So this mm. is that young group that's still there. I think they're just going to get better. I think this was like, I think we said this last year because they showed glimpses last year that they can be really good. Sacred Heart Cathedral. So I think this might be it. Might I don't know it. how much they tapped into the portal, but. <laughs> hey, you is know. Is there a transfer portal in San Francisco? <laughs> I don't know, but, but I'm going to go with the Irish 28 to 24. Let's go. I got I got the I got the prep. 38. Prep boys. All right. That's that's the prediction segment, people. Right now, Coach Andrew is up six to five. And uh we're gonna we, we need to clarify the 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 modification. Yes. Um though the reason why we gave out scores is because we're gonna we're gonna implement that. We're gonna receive five points for predicting the exact score and then three points for estimating the flow of the game, right? Like if it's a running clock or if it's a close game or whatever. So. And then it's just a one point for a win. And then one point for a win. So it'll make it a little bit more interesting. And, you know, honestly, it's like, I, remember, all you players out there, this doesn't affect how you play. Don't don't play the spread of like what we're saying. <laughs> this is just fun between me and Alf because yeah. we're making this fun for us because we want to see good entertainment. Remember, go out there and, and perform, entertain. This is what you guys live for. Have fun. Make us proud or prove us wrong. There you go. This Last me segment, coach. Last segment. What are we gonna call this segment? This bonus segment. I don't know yet. I think, I think what we need to do. I mean, we can't use unplugged. No. Well, let, let's think, let's just call it. What's on your mind, Coach? Oh yeah, we started using that last year. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, you know, hmm, what is on my mind? I'll leave it with this. Because, you know, this is going to be uh, – we're going to tease you guys with this last segment. We're going to talk about something that people don't want to talk about, and that is mental health. And oh. I think this is – I think this is something that, you know, I think Alf and I can really dive into. And I think this is something really important that not just the athletes need to hear, but, you know, just people in general. Like, you guys got to hear this. So I look forward to uh, talking about that with you. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to ask me what's on my mind? What's on your mind, Al? What's on my mind? Okay. Well, I've been thinking about this since Saturday towards the end of the first quarter of the Bellman Menlo Atherton game. Um, one of our one of our players, I, I consider him as one of our GSF players because he is invited. He was invited to the GSF All-Star game. Uh, Reese McKeever suffered a uh very uh it, it was oh man it was bad it was a bad injury uh broken leg um i'll just you know the highlights are there we we showed it blurry but that just kind of as a dad of 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 a child uh who went through uh, an injury um you know my son aj was in a motorcycle accident three years ago now. Uh, he's doing well. And this has a lot to do with the mental health thing too. Um, it kind of triggered me. I mean, just hearing what was going on on the field after the injury and his parents coming down, his dad crying, 
Reese crying and all that stuff kind of brought back a lot of memories and um, I can relate, you know, obviously my son's accident was, was uh, on a motorcycle on 280 and, and it was, it was bad. Uh, but one of the staff from Bellarmine posted something that afternoon. I think it was Morales. He was the, he's a photographer for the school. Uh, he mentioned something about like how Reese played the game how he was playing the game up to that point. Uh, we had a lot of expectation for, for Bellarmine coming into the season. We featured two of their players. We followed them during the summer, seven on sevens. And uh, uh, this post mentioned something about like playing every single play as if it were your last. And I know we're in week two and there's a lot, a lot more weeks ahead, but that kind of like, stuck to my mind. I was like, oh, I want to, I want to remind everybody about this. So players, especially if you're a senior, this could be it for you. So give it that effort. And, and I really liked how, you know, both sides of, of, of the, of, I mean, both MA and, and Bellarmine kind of came together uh, uh, after that happened and they, they, they moved on um, and they played a great game. Obviously, MA ended up winning by a lot, 40 to 10. But, you know, for Bellarmine, it's it's not like they they're just young, I think. They have a lot of young guys, inexperienced guys, and MA is just better. And uh, but that post really got got me. I was like, man, this is something that uh, that every single player out there needs to remember. Every single coach and parent needs to remind their kids about uh high school football is supposed to be fun and and um, but things happen, right? Things happen. Uh, I mean, shoot, before we we did this, uh, I I was just watching the news and there was another school shooting in Georgia. Um, I mean, school just started and here we go again. Uh, but I'm not gonna get into that whole thing. I'm just the the, the thing that I that I just kind of want to mention is like enjoy and treasure every single moment you have with your brothers, sisters, whatever, your family, uh, and, and play every single play as if it were your last, because you never know what could happen. Man, this is, this is a very, very strong athletic kid that we followed. We have a lot of expectations. I know he's going to be okay, but, you know, it, it, things happen. And things could be taken away from you just like that. If there's anything we learned from COVID, Bam. I mean, it goes back to that again. And uh, we've seen a lot of players get hurt. I mean, you have a couple of players that you train that went through something difficult. You know, Tyler and um, who was the other one from? Uh, um, is it Christopher, the running back? So I had, I had a few. So, you know, I had Tyler Hodges, um, Ray Waller. Mario Mello, mm. like you know, it's you just ne you never know. Yeah, and and it's part of the game. Getting hurt is part of the game, um, but staying strong and, and and having the mentality to to be prepared for whatever, I think it's it's very very important for us adults. I think that's something we need to make sure that we 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 address, so that when things happen, nobody panics. Everybody stays calm. It's just part of the game, but you do not want any regrets. So, you know, I, I know Reese is doing better. I texted with his dad. Look, sounds Everything sounds positive, but just the fact that he got hurt in the first quarter of this game. Um, yeah. It, it just sucks. So anyways, we're thinking about you, Reese, and uh, that's what's on my mind, coach. <laughs> <laughs> well... There we go. Yeah. Week two. Here we go, baby. You watch it get sports focus, GSF Weekly. Make us proud, prove us wrong. <laughs> <laughs>